Today on Beerus TV, the corals are coming in. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beerus TV. This week we're starting a brand new series based on the 20 or so tanks here at the Beerus office. Throughout this series, we'll introduce you to all of the BRS team as well as their tanks. We'll get to see the progression and evolution of these tanks across a wide range of skill sets, ranging from some fairly advanced reefers and customer service, all the way to the members of the admin team who might be relatively new or even brand new reefers just starting out. I think it'll be fun to hear all the different approaches to reefing and follow along over the months and years with the types of successes that they have, the changes they might make, even more valuable, the challenges that they run into and how they dealt with it. The evolution of the tank, discovering new challenges and conquering them really is part of what makes this a hobby for many of us. However, hopefully, just like the 52 weeks of reefing in the BRS 160, this can serve as a tool to avoid the issues to begin with as well as dealing with them when they arise. One of the coolest elements of all this is we have the opportunity to help bring awareness to some of the BRS team's favorite livestock vendors. Favorite meaning who all the staff here buy from when they're looking for something really special. With Austin Aqua Farms, Worldwide Corals, Unique Corals, and Battle Corals. These awesome suppliers have partnered with us to supply corals throughout this series. After all, it really is the corals that this is all about, so this might be the most valuable piece of the entire thing. You also get to see some of the best of what's out there in a real world environment and watch them grow out into adult sized colonies. So first things first, we have corals coming in this week and these corals are going to be going into a lot of tanks. So a full quarantine process is more important than ever. One of our CS agents, Randy, was hired to take care of the quarantine system and manage the inflow of corals, which is a big job with a lot of responsibility. With that understood, this is our system and the quarantine plan. We asked Vertex to build us a frag system a while back with limited guidance other than make it awesome and they obviously nailed it. The dual tank system is plumbed to the same sump which currently runs dual skimmers and a media reactor. There's also a closed loop spray bar in the top of each tank, a top off water chamber, salt mixing container, channel pipe for hiding cords. In the back of each chamber there are brackets for marine pier filtration media plates, dosing containers for the touchscreen Libra Vertex dosers, and of course Vertex's new Cerebra touchscreen aquarium control. Lighting the system, we're using the Giesman Aurora T5 LED Hybrid. I don't think it's a secret that the BRS team is a huge fan of T5 lighting because of the highly diffused even blanket of light it provides, which is particularly valuable to SPS corals, but the technology geeks and all of us can't pass up on the visual features that LEDs provide, so the T5 Hybrid is probably the most popular selection around here. This is the system a vast majority of the corals are going to be quarantined in. However, some of the corals are going to go into the equipment testing station for quarantine. This is another station Vertex built for us, which has two aquariums built into the back to house fishing now corals on. So the other side, we can test skimmers, pumps, reactors, really anything that we want to test on a real tank with livestock. This is a replica of the same testing units Vertex has at their R&D facility. I'll share why in just a minute why some corals are going to be quarantined in this system rather than the frag tank. This is going to be our general quarantine procedure. When everything comes in, we'll temperature acclimate, and then the first step will be a progressive dip process with first Coral RX and then bare advanced insect killer. There is a reason why we're doing Coral RX first, and that's because the solution is clear, which will allow us to inspect each frag for signs of pests, either the pests themselves or obvious signs like flatworm bite marks, which can be done with any type of flashlight, but a lot of people like to use black lights, which can make some of the signs more pronounced. After you pull the frags out of the dip and swish, you can inspect the bottom of the container. If you see something like an adult nudie or flatworm, it's absolutely time to be more aggressive about some of the next steps because the frags likely have eggs on them as well, which the dip won't kill. After that dip, we're also going to dip in what some might assume is a bit more aggressive with bare advanced insecticide. This solution is milky white, so you won't be able to see what comes off and why we didn't do it first. You also notice we had flow and a heater in the dip tanks as well. The heater is to keep the tank temp up because we'll likely be dipping for hours and the flow is an important component of getting the pests off. After that, we'll rinse in two additional baths to get the dip off. It's really important that we don't get any of the dip solution into the tank so the two progressive rinses is very wise if not critical. At this point, you can be fairly certain that all the most common adult forms of pests are probably dead or at least let go of the coral at the bottom of the dip tank. This is where we're going to take an approach which some reefers might consider a bit more extreme from a quarantine perspective, but also very wise. We're going to cut the bases off all the corals where that's an option, and not a single coral base will ever enter our frag system. 
everything where that's not possible is going to go into the less aggressive equipment testing quarantine system. This is why, it doesn't matter if it's a frag plug, rock, or skeletal structure of the coral itself, this is not only where some of the adult pests might crawl into and not be released by the dip, but also where the egg sacs are laid. Unless you're a pro using some type of magnifying equipment, you're never going to see the egg sacs, but they're almost always laid at the base of the coral below the live tissue. By cutting the frag off and leaving some live tissue behind, you're almost completely eliminating the chances of introducing eggs or well-hidden adults into the tank. And this is the step where we transition into like 99% assurance that we're not going to introduce a predatory pest into the frag quarantine system. Meaning less than one in 100 corals with pests are going to make it past this aggressive dip and remounting program. When you consider only a small fraction of corals have pests, I think we're going to see like 99.9% .9 effectiveness with this as long as all the protocols are followed and nothing wet, including corals, fish, tools, or hands that have been in another system enter this one without being dried out or sterilized completely first. That number is probably debatable. It can easily be 95% as 99.9%, .9%, but either way, we're going to inch one step closer to 100% by quarantining all the corals for two months without any other additions so we can review for signs of introduced pests. So what about all the other corals where removing their base or exposed skeletal structure just isn't a realistic option? Those are the corals which are going to end up in the equipment station quarantine where after dips, proper inspection is going to be the primary barrier. We're going to do the same two month quarantine review period after introduction, so it's likely we're going to catch any issue here as well. So that's it, and with the exception of Battle Corals, who's putting something special together for us, all the corals are here, and we're going to put Randy to work on implementing that new quarantine process and share what's arrived and leave you with a quick montage of everything that's here. Again, if you get a chance, go check out Worldwide Corals, Unique Corals, the Austin Aqua Farms, and of course, Battle Corals, because all these teams are amongst the best in the business. In a couple months, these corals will be done with quarantine, and we'll start to introduce you to each tank and who's running them. For now, we'll leave you with these shots. Thank you.